Hello everyone, this is Becca from Willow Hill Designs. Hope everyone is doing well. And today I am sharing some quilt blocks that I have designed to go with a tilde collection that I've had for some time now. And uh, there's about three or four collections that I have been saving for this particular quilt. And I drew up a few blocks that I thought I would share because I think they'll be very fun um, to sew because I tried to draw them up so that there's no matching of seams within the blocks so that the blocks would be fun and easy, mindless sewing. Um, it is designed also to be a scrap quilt. You can use um, whatever fabrics you have in your scraps as long as your pieces will match the sizes of the elements. And, um, or you can use your fat quarters or yardage to make this quilt. And um, so I'll start by showing you the, the blocks that I have. Um, matter of fact, I'll leave this here so that you can take a screenshot of this. They're eight and a half inch blocks. This is block one, block two, block three, and block four. Block four is a half block. They are eight and a half inch unfinished and they are um, eight inch finished and four and a half unfinished, four inch finished. Um, if you'd like to take a screenshot of this paper, this will show all of this, the blocks and their elements and the sizes for each piece. And the, si the pieces are labeled with the sizes next to them. So if you'd like to go ahead and do that, this is block one, and this is made up of all two and a half by four and a half inch pieces. And this is the block that I came up with. And this is really quite easy because there is no matching of any seams anywhere. This doesn't have to match anything. This doesn't have to match anything. I liked to set it up where these two pieces here are the same fabric, almost like a little frame. But again, they could all be different fabrics and it's very scrappy. Um, so that is block one. This is block two, which is just two large blocks in the center of four and a half by four and a half. And these are two and a half by three and a half, two and a half by five and a half. And again, no matching of seams here or here. And this is block two. Very easy. Um, easy to construct. And the way I would construct this is I you can chain sew um, your little block. So I would just sew these two together, these two together these two together, and then I would add this to the center section and this to the center section. And on these, um, I should go back to this one. Um, again, it's just easy to pick up two pieces and sew. I would sew these two together, these two together, these two together, and then I would sew this onto the center section this onto the center section, and I press between uh, sewing each piece. Uh, I like I like everything to be nice and flat and neat. I, I just think it gives you more accurate block. So when adding this and this to the center section, I just put them on, stitch, and then I press away from the center section. This seam and this seam is pressed away from the center section. And that's just really basically to provide um, ease of piecing down the road if, if any two pieces do happen to collide with another seam and you do have to match, they'll nest. So these seams are pressed away from the center section on block one. For block two, Again, we pieced these separately into these units, and this was added to the center 
This is added to this center, and this time they're pressed towards this center section. And again, that is just in case down the road you put these two together and you do have to match these. Um, they will nest, the seams will nest. So these seams are going in towards the center and these seams are going out from the center. So they will nest, but if you don't want to um, have to match anything, all you have to do is turn the block and there's no matching. There's no seam here to match at all. So that's block number two. And block number three is this one. And here it is here. And um, these are three and a half inch squares. And they are joined by a two and a half by six and a half. And then there's a one and a half by eight and a half, one and a half by eight and a half strip on the outside. So the way I would do this, and I'm just explaining this for beginners. Uh, this is a very beginner friendly quilt. And um, I designed this quilt because in working in my son's pictorial quilt, the landscape quilt, it's, the, you know, it's very tedious. There's lots of little intricate shapes and lots of thought that has to go into all of the pieces. And I just wanted to sit down and sew something mindlessly with happy colors and not have to really match. So there's no matching within this block again. Um, I would sew these two units together and then I would sew these two together and then I would add this to this and then this to these, this whole unit. And then I would add these strips on afterwards. And the strips are pressed out just because it's easier. That's the way it wants to go. There are seams here and you don't, they seams generally don't want to go against where there's this kind of bulkiness with a seam. They want to go to the piece with the least resistance and this has no seam, so there's no resistance. So, and the pressing doesn't matter in any of these blocks. Um, I generally have been pressing to the dark, except for these first two where I said press away from the center in block one and block two, press towards the center. And that's if you're worried about um, running into a place where you have to match seams. This is block four. This is two, a four and a half by eight and a half. And this has two, two and a half inch squares and two four and a half inch rectangles. And here's the block right here. There's two and a half inch squares, two rectangles that are two and a half by four and a half, and then two inch squares, two and a half inch squares. And um, I, I made this as an optional block. You don't have to make this block. But again, I would stitch these together, these together, these together, and the pressing doesn't matter. I decided to press this and this open just in case I ran into anything where I had to match a seam. You don't have to worry. These seams are pressed open. Matching will be easy. That's across the row. Um, and the reason that I made this block is because when you're uh, putting your rows together, when you're putting your rows together, if you're putting block on top of block, you have to match those blocks. So if I was sewing this row and this row, and then I came down and started the next row, I would, and let's see, we'll add one more in here. So I would have to, there would be a match point right here you'd have to match these seams as you're going across the row. So I didn't want to have to do that. So I took a half block and 
where did I put that half block? There's one. So I just took that half block, and if you start it in the beginning of the row, and you construct your row going down, and then you put a full block here, um, you don't have to worry about any seams matching. This doesn't have to match anything. This doesn't have to match. Of course, you can turn your blocks any way you'd like for color, but this offsets, this half block offsets your row. So you'll put one at the beginning of your row and one at the end of your row. And that's what this diagram shows here. So if you start out with a four and a half by a, a four and a half by eight and a half, and then put your whole blocks across, then the next row start with a whole block, go across and add your half, your rows will be equal. And these seams are staggered. You don't have one seam on top of the other to match. So this half block is optional. If you'd like to do it, that's fine. If you don't want to do it, that's fine too. And um, so going back to these blocks here, if, you're, if you are um, going down your row and you want to put block one to block two, and you really don't feel like matching here, you can just turn your block and nothing will have to match here. And again, that's why I did this. This is why I purposely designed these blocks this way. However, if you have directional prints, like this is directional, this one, it has bees on it and little urns. Um, and if you want those directional prints upright, like this is a tree, um, then you would just, you could just take and add this other block in here. And this has a straight seam. And this seam, there's nothing to match. So if you don't feel like matching anything, put this block in. And that's why I made this block this way, because it can be popped in there if you don't feel like matching seams up. Um, so it's really about using up your scraps. I mean, you could... You could make a baby quilt out of this in blues for boys or whatever colors for boys and pinks, peaches, whatever, yellows for girls. You could make it patriotic. You could make it very modern looking, very bright looking. You could make it Civil War. Um, I think these blocks lend themselves to almost anything, really, any kind of fabric. And... Um, I think it's just great fun to have all of these colors, this profusion of color. And when you're done, you can put them all on your design wall and see uh, the color placement for everything. You can see how it would look. And you can see here, just looking at some of these, the happy, the happy colors that there are. And... Um, I just think it will be so pretty when it's all finished. Very springy and happy colors. Um, now I have some diagrams for cutting instructions. And I'll share that with you. And you can, again, take a screenshot. Excuse me, I dropped, I dropped that piece of paper that has the cutting instructions. This is for a uh, fat quarter, and you'll be able to get all of the pieces for all four blocks out of one fat quarter. Now, I cut up 23 fat quarters, fat quarters and quarter yards. Um, I'm not quite sure where that'll take me. I think I can do six whole blocks across and a half, so six and a half across, and eight down. Um, and I think that gives me a 52 by 60, what, um, eight by 64 inch quilt, and I, I will probably add borders. 
it may get bigger. And the beauty of this quilt is you can cut more um, scraps of fabric too that match in with your colors um, that, that kind of go nicely with all of your colors. So, but out of one fat quarter, you'll get enough for one, for all four blocks. And um, on here, the red dots indicate and the red arrows indicate vertical cuts and the blue indicate horizontal cuts. And then I've listed for you down here all of the um, element, all the, the pieces of the blocks, their sizes, and their letter name. And so for a fat quarter, I would straighten this edge up, and then I would make a three inch cut, three and a half inch cut, a five inch cut, and then I would leave this nine inches, just leave it. And then I would take my three inch and I would turn it sideways and cut eight and a half inches and cut this in half. So it would be, that's three inches. So one and a half, one and a half. And that gives you um, the pieces, these long thin pieces, which are kind of strips that allow you not to have to match anything. So that, don't cut don't cut this um here yet just just cut it here don't go all the way down one and a half just cut here at eight and a half then cut your two pieces one and a half by eight and a half then this bottom section can be cut into two and a half by four and a half and there'll be a little bit of waste this next uh section is three and a half I just lay my three and a half inch square ruler on here, the, the creative grids, make your cuts. Here's a five inch strip. That I would cut all the way down the center. This one don't cut all the way down because you want those two pieces. This one cut all the way down and then make your sub cuts, four and a half by two and a half. Then this nine inch piece Again, depending on the width of your fabric and the way they cut your fat quarter, it should be nine inches. It may be a little bit more. I would turn that sideways and I would make my cuts that way. And that's what these blue arrows are. Two and a half, two and a half, two and a half. Then there's a four and a half inch cut, a two and a half inch cut. And then this should be around three and a half, maybe more. Hopefully, maybe, hopefully not less. And then you make your sub cuts from there, two and a half by two and a half. You get five of those. Here's a two and a half by six and a half. That's cut from this strip. Then these two are two and a half by five and a half. A little waist, a two and a half inch. I probably should have drawn the waist on this side. Put your four and a half by four and a half inch square if you have the creative grid square and a half or whatever. Four and a half inch ruler it makes it easy. Cut those two pieces, a little bit of waste. And again, you'll sub cut here two and a half by three and a half. And you get the two and a half at the end and um, three and a half by three and a half and the two and a half. And this is again, one fat quarter provides enough for all four blocks, the three whole blocks and the fourth half block. Um, so that is the cutting. And what I, what I have here is a tin with all my pieces in there and I've labeled them. So two and a half by five and a half, two and a half by six and a half, one and a half by eight and a half and so on. Um, these are just some extra fabrics from Tilda that I may use for a border, but I just mark them like this is a four and a half. This is the three and a half. And I mean, again, you can choose when you're making up your blocks. Just I have my block pattern in front of me and then I decide what fabrics. These are the four and a half. Really, you have used the most you need the most of these, I should say. And then I just, this is the one that is not a tilde fabric. This is, I think, Laura Hine. Um, 
but the four and a halfs, the two and a halfs, the two and a half by three and a half. And I just go in my box and when I'm setting up a block and um, set it out and then get to sewing on it. And this makes it very easy. And I have also a quarter of a yard layout for you as well. So if you're cutting from yardage, or you may just have quarter yards rather than fat quarters, uh, this is another way you can take a screenshot of this. And um, this again will give you all of the elements for all four blocks, for the three whole full blocks and the half block. And the red dots are vertical cuts, and then you subcut. And then I've listed all the parts again, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, um, of the elements. They're named for each block, and their sizes are next to it. So if you want to take a screenshot of that. And again, here I would make a one and a half inch cut, and you get your eight and a half piece out of that because this is generally nine by the width of the fabric. I'd make a five inch cut and a five inch cut, a seven inch cut, four and a half inch cut, a nine inch cut, a five and a five. And then once I have these cut this five inch, I would cut it in half, two and a half, and then I would sub cut the four and a half inch pieces. This gives you six of those four and a half, and here's four more. That gives you 10. That's for the block number one. That will also make block number four. Um, so you'll have enough for all the blocks, but then of course you'll be mixing and matching with all your other four and a half inch pieces. Same thing with this one. Come down the center, sub cutting it, and then make your cuts from there. The seven inch, I would cut it across here don't go all the way down three and a half inches because you'll ruin this piece here and this piece can be put in um, your scrap bin or it could be used for here if you want to add an extra piece uh, maybe the long strips uh, depending on what your this is seven so that should be a two inch piece so you might get one of these out of that i just put that in my scrap bin so once i take that off then i cut the four three and a half by three and a half. Here's the four and a half by four and a half and you just cut that in half. This nine inch, that'll be one unit. You'll sub cut that horizontally and then, but don't go all the way down again here. Sub cut two and a half, two and a half, two and a half and then sub cut those. And then you'll have one and a half by eight and a half and that gives you the other long piece for block number three. Then this five inch, cut it all the way down, two and a half, two and a half, and sub cut. And then over here, whatever's left, um, this is a piece here, four by four and a half. And you can cut whatever you may want out of that. You could put it in your scrap bin, or you could cut a two and a half by four and a half out of there. If you made a mistake somewhere, you could, um, in cutting, and you'll have an extra, or you could make a three and a half by three and a half, a two and a half by three and a half, a two and a half by two and a half. So that is a little allowance for you for um, for any errors, or it can go in your scrap bin. So that is the, the cutting instructions for a quarter yard of fabric. Um, and I mean, these were all fabrics that I had. I didn't buy anything. And one of the things that I like to do is I take these design boards and I choose from my tin there. I look at my, I keep my block, I keep my block guide right by the sewing machine. And if I'm making block one, I just glance quickly and see what I need for there. Um, now for this one, block four, I know that I need four of the two and a half and two, two and a half by four and a half. So I just go through my tin and I choose some, and these are all ready for sewing. The same thing for this, for block one, I would look here and see what I need. Choose the colors that I want. 
it's set up on my design board. And this is just cardboard covered with batting. Actually, this is a fleece. Um, and then block two, the same thing, just choosing just random colors because the whole quilt is going to be just a color perfusion. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to name this quilt. I'm not sure yet. I haven't come up with a name for it yet. And again, block three. Um, look at your paper. See what pieces you need and just pull them. I put them on my design board and then I stack these up. And when I have time or I feel like doing some mindless sewing where I don't have to match or pin or be precise, because as I said with the pictorial quilt, um, you really have to be very precise in what you're doing. And which is fun. It's nice. It's I like a challenge, but sometimes I like to just sew and not have to worry about anything. And seeing all these happy colors makes me think of spring. So I hope you've enjoyed this and um, maybe you'll give this a try using up some of your scraps um, or some of your collections that you have. Um, I have another Tilda collection here. <laughs> that I will come up with a quilt for. Um, these are, she has such beautiful fabrics, but I love these and I've been saving them for a while. So this is, this has been fun to put these blocks together. So thank you for joining me today. And um, I will come back when I have finished all the blocks and with a layout and show you what I've come up with. So thank you and wishing you many blessings and see you in the next video. Bye for now.